The statistics remain staggering. More than 6 million Americans are currently living with Alzheimer's disease. There's an enormous number of patients who are suffering from the disease right now. One out of every three senior citizens dies with Alzheimer's or another form of dementia. Alzheimer's disease kills more people than breast cancer and prostate cancer combined. You can't see it, he looks fine. If you walked up to him, he would shake your hand. And in the year 2022 alone, Alzheimer's and other dementias will cost the nation $321 billion. Those are just some of the statistics that help point out why Alzheimer's awareness is vital in our ongoing goal. To get to the day where we can acknowledge the first survivor of Alzheimer's and why your Fox 29 family has joined the Alzheimer's Association for decades in this journey. With all the support that I have gotten, I just can't even tell you how much this means to me. But as important as the statistics are, most of us have a personal story of how Alzheimer's and dementia have impacted us directly. Every one of us has had a different experience with someone with Alzheimer's. There's no set, here's the story. It's heartbreaking to watch, it really is, because the person's there, but they're not there. Yay! So for the next 30 minutes, we'll share some of those stories discuss how people are facing their challenges. And together we will work towards better understanding as we continue this walk to end Alzheimer's. It's been more than two decades since I first started working with the Alzheimer's Association on this journey to a cure. I'm Sue Serio. And I'm Bill Anderson. And let me start by acknowledging your purple for Alzheimer's. You know, when we go to the walk to end Alzheimer's, it's a sea of purple. It's so cool. Now, after I saw Sue's commitment, I joined her and many of the other Fox 29 family in such an important cause. A common challenge of Alzheimer's and dementia is the decision that family members are forced to make when they just can't care for their loved ones anymore. The Kloss family faced that decision not very long ago. He's my husband, We're married for 47 years, in September. He's totally dedicated to his family all these years. He, he loved playing with his grandchildren. That was the highlight of his life, being pop-pop. And, you know, not being able to have that interaction anymore and being out and talking to people, he just declined. Eleanor and Adele are talking about their husband and father, a military veteran and loving family man that they call the chief. Just a, just a wonderful man. I, I don't know how else to explain my life with him. Um, and for, to watch him losing everything, um, it's just, it crushes me. The chief, Ed Kloss, is still living, but like it's done to so many families, Alzheimer's disease has robbed him and them of many of his best qualities. You know, I told my brothers, but, you know, we were all just like, nah, nah, he's just, he's getting older. It's just, uh, it's just memory, you know, he's not working anymore. This kind of thing happens. You know, you make every excuse to not accept what you know is happening. Things continued to deteriorate, but the family continued to care for a man, even in the most challenging circumstances, who had always cared for them. So there's this horrible emotional roller coaster that you go up and down and up and down. And one day he's okay, the next day he's yelling at you for, you know, um, taking something that you don't even know about or uh, I'm sitting in the chair one day, he opens the refrigerator and starts drinking salad dressing. Until one day, they had to admit that they simply couldn't. The outburst, the wandering, a couple violent issues from a man who never 
laid a hand on me and his entire life respected me too much. I realized that he was having situations where he no longer knew me. In our home, I mean, he would ask me, where, whose house is this? They agreed to share their story because it's one that thousands of families face and hopefully can learn from. When you're married to someone for so long and you've made that commitment, I felt guilty. I felt guilty not being the one there taking care of him all the time because I, I you know, for in sickness and in health. I made that commitment to him. Support groups, family meetings, and interaction with the Alzheimer's Association help them to understand that the guilt that so many feel, although completely understandable, it isn't helping anyone. I wasn't asking anybody for help. I was, uh, you know, he's my husband, he's my responsibility. And there were just times where I did nothing but cry. The chief now lives in a memory care facility where his family still sees him daily. He's getting the help and support that sometimes can only be provided by trained professionals. And you love that person. You love the person they were and you accept the person they are now, but that doesn't make it any easier for the caregiver. The Kloss family found help and support for the chief and for themselves. They share their story, walk in the chief's honor, and do whatever else they can so you realize that there is support available for you as well. To admit things to yourself, to admit that you need help, to admit that he needs help, to admit that you can't do it all on your own. Now we started with a look at where we are with Alzheimer's, but sometimes it's easier to grasp when you hear the stories, all too familiar to many, that prove that you're not alone. My mom was always smiling. Like, she was always just that happy person. And we, had a, we would always say like, oh, we have to laugh every day. So like, just finding that like, enjoying of life. Sitting down with Amanda Johnson and hearing about her relationship with her mother is such a tribute to her strength when you realize that she recently passed away this summer. You know, my mom passed August 16th and we were in Disney in July. We were going out to dinner. We were going to the beach. We would take it. We always say we were going to go on an adventure. Um, so for her passing in August was super unexpected. That's spring of 21. And this is part of why Amanda is sharing her story. There were several instances of Alzheimer's in her family. She had been a caretaker for other family members, but with her mother, it was different. Mom was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's in the summer of 2017. 2018, 2019, we were in like not a, a bad place. She would be able to kind of take care of herself. And as we kind of got into the 2020, it was more of that like, okay, I need help, you know, making lunch, making my breakfast. I, she wasn't um, like able to do those things on her own throughout the course of the day. Because her mother was only in her mid 50s at the time, Amanda says she just adjusted her life because she believed that that's what people who care about their loved ones, they're supposed to do. I lived it 24 seven, right? Like. I got up in the morning, I got mom dressed, I brought her downstairs, I, we did medicine, we set up on the TV, we lived our life by TV schedules of what show was on when. Phillies. She's a Phillies fan. Oh yeah. Now caring for someone with Alzheimer's can be a lot. Caring for someone with Alzheimer's, when people look at them and see a healthy middle-aged person, that presents another set of unique challenges. When I say to people like, oh yeah, my mom's 58, she has early onset Alzheimer's, they're like, what? Like, that's something grandparents have, isn't it? And you're like, no, well, yes, but it can present differently. The painful lesson that Amanda and her family learned when they believed they had years left to spend with their mother. My mom had a seizure here the morning of August 8th, um, and she was taken in an ambulance. They were like, well, she just got here. You're going to have to wait. And I'm like, I know my mom is 58. I know my mom doesn't 
a exact traditional Alzheimer's, but like this is why this is happening. Um, so they actually intubated and sedated her in the ER, and we never were able to get her off the intubation. Even as someone who had witnessed multiple family members with Alzheimer's, Amanda admits she wasn't prepared. And so now she works hand in hand with the Alzheimer's Association to do whatever she can to make sure others can benefit from her journey. I think it is, it's asking for the help is the biggest piece of advice I could give somebody because we think we can figure it out. We think we can take it all on and I'll be the first to say, like, I was like, I'll just do it. I'll figure it out. She participates in support groups. And, you know, since mom's passed and, and finding different grief counseling groups, that's been huge for me because it's the, okay, you're not alone. Like, there's so many other people going through this. She shares her tips and learns from theirs. Hey, if this helps you or as simple as like, I carried a business card that said my loved one suffers from early onset Alzheimer's. Please have patience. They may struggle with social graces, making decisions. Amanda lost her mother way too soon and deals with that pain every day. But she has found that there can be strength through unity. Not alone and like, we would call it finding your new reality. <laughs> like, cause it's not a new normal cause nothing will ever be normal again. I think has really helped. And she got help and now is committed to giving it as well because that's the kind of person her mother was and the kind of person she would want Amanda to be. Alzheimer's disease impacts us in so many ways, not the least of which is the emptiness and unanswered questions of spouses left behind. But many, even in their pain, have found ways to step up and support others. We met on the Mount Whitney Trail in California. She was with a fellow who uh, wanted to go on. The weather was bad, and she said, no, I'm not going to do that. So she turned back, and she camped right next to me in Mirror Lake. But there I was with a tent half full, and there it was raining. And I said, you can share my tent if you like. She did. Yeah, this is the early years. I think this starts in 69 and goes all the way up to about 73. Listening to Ron Enfield describe his late wife, Diane, is the type of thing that makes you smile. That must have been Thanksgiving. The more Ron talks, you realize. Let's see. How challenging Alzheimer's can ultimately be. Uh, we went, oh gosh, at least 10,000 miles together in the camper, and she had dementia at the time but she enjoyed it. She enjoyed seeing things, whether she remembered it or not. They were kindred spirits, traveling the world together. But over time, a 2008 Alzheimer's diagnosis transitioned Ron from partner to caretaker. She uh, continued to develop slowly. I was uh, working at the time, and by 2012, I was just about ready to retire when she got in the car and uh, disappeared and ended up down in Salem County because she didn't know where she was. Like so many spouses, Ron was committed to standing by her side, but the disease just kept getting worse, creating a fairly common story that caretakers all over understand. He had delusions at times. For instance, she believed that her primary care physician, who was a woman, was uh, living in Medford, New Jersey, near where we used to live and was being kept prisoner by her husband. She believed that so strongly that she called 911 to tell them about this woman being held prisoner. Diane passed away in 2018, but before that time, Ron was faced with so many questions. And I knew almost nothing about Alzheimer's care at the time. I was just making it up as I went along. And I found this Alzheimer's support group and um, went to a meeting. He has been attending and leading support groups ever since. A safe space to share the thoughts many may not be comfortable with because it's an omission that they need help too. If you are the caregiver, nothing can happen to you because if it does, who's going to take care of your spouse? Who's going to do that? And so it's very important for the caregiver to have support. Ron makes sure the memory of Diane lives on. He now has a blog, wrote and published a book in her honor, and continues to spread the message about the need for support, both during and after a loved one battles Alzheimer's. There's no shame in reaching out for help when you need it, first of all. And usually people don't reach out to a support group until they do. Sometimes they wait long past that point until they just can't keep going by themselves anymore.
So let's take some time to share with you the current status of the battle with Alzheimer's and how we can all help. The Alzheimer's Association has been on the front lines of the battle to find a cure for decades. From multiple walks to support groups, research and awareness, they work daily on this important cause. Christina Franzel is one of the many local leaders at the association, sharing how we can collectively work to end Alzheimer's. Christina, uh, I think that uh, we have made some strides perhaps in uh, the fight against Alzheimer's this year. Tell us something positive. We've got so many positive things happening in the world of Alzheimer's and dementia. In particular, I will say the advances in research and treatment potential have completely given us so much hope and excitement around the community. We had one treatment FDA approved, some of you may remember, last year, last June, called Aduhelm. We are on the precipice of hopefully having a second possible treatment be FDA approved, and that will be in the not too distant future. It's called Lacanumab. In addition to that, I would say we know that moving and the way you treat your body what you eat, your stress level, how much sleep you get. We know that that helps you to minimize your risk of developing dementia. So we've had so many wonderful walks to end Alzheimer's. We have so many families that get together and form teams to help this fight against Alzheimer's. When we raise so much money, and we're proud that we do, um, where tell us exactly where our money goes. More than $300 million is currently invested in research that is happening around the globe. At any given moment, research is happening on this planet. And more likely than not, the Alzheimer's is part of helping to lead that work. In addition to that, we are providing care and support to thousands of families across the country, many right here in our Delaware Valley area, who are managing a dementia diagnosis. They're on the journey right now with a family member. When people find out all the things that the Alzheimer's Association does, what's the thing that, in your experience, surprises them? the most. It is the fact that our 1-800 helpline is there around the clock for our families impacted by dementia. I am always happy to know when somebody has made the connection to our helpline to get support for themselves or their loved one with the disease. I'm often disappointed by the fact that people didn't know we were there when they needed us, which is why you're helping us, Sue, in raising awareness and understanding about the disease. Anything that you might need along your journey. We are there for you and we want to make sure people are reaching out to us for that support. ALZ.org is our website and we have a wealth of information there for people. Well, that's good to know for all of us and uh, we'll keep fighting the fight along with you. worked in partnership with the Alzheimer's Association for years. We know of their work and encourage you to seek them out when you need them and support them when you can. Now there are multiple walks and events to show your support, but there is help available every day by calling the numbers on the screen. These are hard stories to hear, but there is hope. New drugs are currently being tested and Alzheimer's cases are actually declining. So we must keep going. But first, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to the families for sharing. And let's all keep going, as Sue said, because one day soon, we will find a cure. Yes.